Hello and welcome back to another Higher Mathematics video. Today we're going to be continuing our topic on straight lines and in particular today we're going to be looking at another type of straight line, um, especially within triangles and this line is called a perpendicular bisector. So far at Higher we have looked at two types of straight lines called medians and altitudes. Today we're going to be looking at a line called a perpendicular bisector and I'm going to be explaining to you what it is using this diagram of triangle A, well we've got the line AB, sorry, so it's, we've got the line AB and we've just formed it into a triangle by creating two straight lines out of it. We can see it's a right angled triangle and we have this little line here from C to D, this blue line and we say that this blue line CD bisects the line AB. So what does bisect mean? Well, to put it uh, simply, we split up the word, we get bi and sector. Well, it splits the line A and B into two equally length lines. So it splits the line AB directly in half. So we say the line CD is a bisector of the line AB because it intersects the line at exactly the midpoint of the line AB. So we can see that this point right here at which the line meets AB is going to be the midpoint of the line AB. Now we've talked about midpoints before, be sure to go and check up on them if you want to remind yourself how to work out a midpoint. Now we are also saying that it's a perpendicular bisector and when we talked about perpendicular lines we said that it, they meet at a right angle to another line. So this bisector CD of the line AB is a perpendicular bisector because not only does it bisect it in half but it also is perpendicular to the line AB and that's shown with that little right angled symbol in there. So we'll write a little general statement saying a perpendicular perpendicular uh, bisector is a line which cuts through and we said it cuts through the midpoint so we'll see it cuts through the midpoint of a line segment at, and it's important that we say that it's at right angles, and this is because it is perpendicular. So again, we can see the line CD is perpendicular to AB and it bisects it. It cuts it through the midpoint of the line AB. Now again, like we did with medians and altitudes, the best way to work out the equation of a perpendicular bisector of a line AB, so this example here says A is the point minus 2, 1 and B is the point 4, 7. Find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the line AB. So the best way to work out the equation is by doing three simple steps that I'll show you in a moment but there's not really an exact way. So it's best to just do an example to show you the three steps we do when working out a perpendicular bisector. So before I begin the first step, I'm gonna start with a little sketch so I know roughly what I'm looking for. So as you can see, I've got the line AB here. If we were to form it into a triangle, it might look something like that. However, we're not doing that. We're just going to look at it simply as a line. So we can see the line AB a is the point minus 2, 1, and B is the point 4, 7, and we've got this perpendicular bisector that we need to work out. And we can see from my diagram that it cuts the line AB directly in half, so it passes through the midpoint. And we also know that it's perpendicular to the line AB, so it meets at a right angle. So, how do we work out the equation of this line? Well, as we know, to work out the equation of a line, we need two things. We need the gradient of the line, and we need a point that lies on the line. Now, do we have any of them? Well, not just yet, but we can work them out. The first thing we want to work out is a point which lies on the line. Now, we don't have an exact point, but we do know that this line here passes through the midpoint 
of the line AB, doesn't it? So therefore, if it passes through the midpoint, the midpoint must lie on this line, correct? So if we work out the midpoint of AB, that will give us a point that lies on the perpendicular bisector. So using our points A minus 2, 1 and B, 4, 7, we can say that the midpoint of AB is going to be equal to, now our formula is x2 plus x1 divided by 2, and then y2 plus y1. Again, always make sure you write out formulas like these to earn you extra marks. So we're going to just simply say over here to the right that that is equal to um, both the x values added together. So minus 2 plus 4 divided by 2 and both the y values added together. So 1 plus 7 divided by 2. So we're just going to simplify that up a little bit. We're going to get minus 2 plus 4, which is 2, divided by 2 is going to give us 1, and then, um, whoops, 1 plus 7 is 8, divided by 2 gives us 4. <clears throat> so we get that the midpoint of the line AB is the coordinate 1, 4, which is this little point right here. And we know that this lies on the perpendicular bisector. So we've got a coordinate. The next thing we want to work out is the gradient of this perpendicular line. Now from our facts and our video about perpendicular bisectors, uh, perpendicular lines, sorry, when we talked about the gradient of perpendicular lines, we said that this is directly equivalent to the line AB. We can use the fact that the gradient of AB applies to the gradient of the line of the perpendicular bisector. So if we work out the gradient of the line AB, first we do y2 take y1 divided by x2 take x1. We put in our coordinates, we've got 7 subtract 1 divided by 4 subtract minus 2. We're going to get 8 over, sorry not 8, we're going to get 6 over 6 because that's 4 plus 2 which simply equals 1 and what did we say about perpendicular gradients? Well we said that the gradient of AB multiplied by the gradient of the perpendicular line so they're equivalent in some way will equal negative 1. So we know that the gradient of AB is 1. 1 times what gives minus 1? Well 1 times minus 1 must equal minus 1. So we know the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is going to be minus 1. Now, doing this, we can move on to our third step, which will be actually working out the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So we can say using the coordinate 1, 4, and the fact that the gradient is equal to minus 1, we know using our formula y take b equals m, x take a, let's let this be a and this be b, we'll have y take 4 equals minus, now we don't need to write the 1, we'll just drop that, and we'll put x subtract 1, and all we have to do, expand the brackets, y take 4 equals minus x plus 1, <clears throat> and we'll give this in general form, so we'll move everything over to one side, we'll get y plus x, We're adding x to both sides, and then subtracting 1 from both sides gives minus 5. Set it equal to 0. Looks a bit like a 6. There we go. Much better. So we get the equation of the perpendicular bisector is y plus x minus 5 is equal to 0. And this is the general three steps we use when working out a perpendicular bisector.